This is King's Quest 6. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I think you, I know you guys, some of you guys have played this already. Let's do a video of this. Alright, let's watch the opening first. <laughs> Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Devontry. <laughs> Alexander, here you are. And you're still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. One of the first games I had the this uh, full motion video, so it was, it's very early stages. Nineteen ninety-two. You remember she was in King's Quest V. She was the girl that that was rescued from Morax Castle. Mother, mother, come quick! Alexander, what are you doing? No, why does it ghost? Mother, I saw Cosima. She was in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes. And it showed me how to find her. How? The stars. I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go... <laughs> I promise. Alexander sailed the known seas and beyond. 
who goes next. Okay. Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Then, he does remember. The shipwreck. The sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents, and that his men made their way safely back to Devon Okay, the person who's next can be the guidebook leader. But I don't want to read Wait, that. so I don't know oh, always the next person going is the guidebook leader? Alright, well, then give it to the person who's after the next person. I don't like reading. So I'll take it. Excuse me. No, because so and then after when Jake shows so Samantha reads and when Samantha right, shows we'll play. No. play, don't worry Do about it. If it's your turn though? playing. What's that? Do you understand that though? No. Well, that Samantha um me right now Jake's oh reading God. because I'm he's after me and then Oh Ryan. Samantha's after you. Oh so Samantha's reading. Oh yeah, yeah Jake, I'm reading. This. And then when Samantha's going, yeah. Jake's reading. Okay. Yeah. So, but, even though I hate let's reading. Let's not make it too complicated. Yeah. Just but it's not complicated. Okay. So yeah, so to look around. It's always good to look around before you start. <laughs> Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. I can't. I Alexander moves the plank back to its original position. No! <laughs> Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. Alexander takes the coin that. and leaves the ruined it's box where one it is. Pixel. <laughs> but at least it's sparkly. At least this game. Alexander has no use for the ship to breathe. bigger though. We would have probably seen it better. The sand is warm to the touch. See any other sparkling things on the beach? I do. Alexander has no wish to disturb the green plants. What? Alexander has no wish to disturb the green plants. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. The sand is warm to the touch. Without a ship, Alexander has no need for a ship's wheel. The sand is warm to the touch. Wait, click on that yellow thing again. What yellow? Is that near the glass? Yeah, it's the same company that made it. The island is covered with lush green plants. No, but probably like a flower. Maybe. Yeah, but I like to make it one. Alexander has no wish to disturb the green plants. The sand. You can tell that it's the same company as EquiQuest because <coughs> some things are one. The sand does not reply. <laughs> The remains of Alexander's sailing ship lie dashed upon the distant shore. Alexander is standing on a beach littered with debris from his shipwreck. A path leads north into the lush green island. An occasional breeze rustles the nearby foliage. I think I'm gonna go. Yeah. Did you pick the thing up? I think she got everything. Did she? Yeah, I did. I oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah, I remember this thing. I'm gonna go here. I don't remember. Yeah.
Oh, I remember the town and the castle. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember. Oh, and I remember the castle from Space Quiz. That was oh, ridiculously yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. Try talking to that one. I don't know what I'm talking about. Old lamps for new. Old lamps for new. Good day, Peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? <laughs> There's always a chance that I'll find a genie. If I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. Good day, merchant. Can you tell me what land this is? By the moon's light, what a question. You must have been out too long in the sun, or perhaps knocked your head up on a rock. Uh, no. Well, perhaps. I was in a shipwreck, you see. My crew and I were trying to reach the land of the Green Isles. I think, well, at least I hope, my men got away safely in the lifeboats. But I myself appear to be rather stuck here. Ah, I see. You must pardon my incredulity, but it has been so long since we have had a foreign visitor. You wrecked your ship, young traveler, due to the currents and reefs around the islands. If your crew was wise enough to steer clear of the isles and head home, they should be fine. In any case, you have met your objective, however bumpy the journey. You mean, this is the land of the Green Isles? Oh, thank the heavens! I had followed the stars, you see, and, and I thought I was close, but... The stars? You must be quite a sailor. But what is the purpose of your visit? I come for... Well, I mean, I, I hope to see... I met some time ago. Say no more. You are smitten with a maiden, are you not? What other than love could so confuse a man's tongue? I'm afraid so. It is Princess Cosima. By the desert sands, when you fall in love, you do not mess around, do you? Is she here? This is the Isle of the Crown, young man. The Castle of the Crown stands on the hill. If it is Cosima you seek, that is where to look. The Castle of the Crown. Thank you, merchant. And good luck to you, lad. You shall need it. Alexander takes a mint. Alexander's musical abilities have always leaned more towards wind instruments. If Alexander wants anything from the pawn shop, he'll have to first give the pawn shop owner something in trade. Alexander already has a mint. He'd prefer to leave some for the other customers. Wind instruments? Is this a wind instrument? If Alexander wants anything from the pawn shop, he'll have to first give the pawn shop owner something in trade. You can look at this stuff. There's a lot of interesting things here. Here's the eye. Towering mightily over the other pawn shop curiosities, the stuffed bear makes an ostentatious display. <coughs> A 
strange looking winged device occupies one corner of the room. It is frail with disuse. Alexander finds it intriguing. Perhaps he thinks it was once used in a local sporting event in which enthusiasts jumped from cliffs, glided on air currents, and then attempted to land, frequently crunching a bone or two in the process. Alexander shudders at the thought and decides to stick to dragon slaying. The Man of Steel wields a long iron pike. The back wall of the shop holds various odds and ends. For example, a hull hole detector for finding those hard to spot holes in small sailboats. A tall skeleton lends an air of mystery to the shop. Alexander. Why? Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. Yes, what can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you? And what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown. But I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a case of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island. An isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. He knows a Those lot. first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for Stop years. Walking. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, <laughs> you might seek an audience at the castle. Thank you kindly, Merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but around. advice is free, Alexander. Making use of uh, it he, he, costs kind of much what more. What he says, if you notice, you got points for talking to him because what he said was kind of important. 
He said that there was um, the ferry hasn't been working. There's a lot of unrest between the islands. Um, but you might want to talk to the ferryman anyway. Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh, yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so, good sir. Really? Thanks. The fireplace can provide Alexander with nothing but warmth. Why doesn't he want... The fireplace can provide Alexander with nothing but warmth. Try clicking the finger on the book if that's what you want to take. Just the, the finger tip. Oh, and wait. Oh, and stop moving the chair. This? It messes her up. Alexander rests his feet for a moment. Alexander picks up and leaps idly through a book called The Changing Role of Court Entertainers Through the Ages. Well, that was refreshing. Alexander has no ambition to set himself up as a merchant. A plaque bearing a merchant crest hangs over the doorway. The bookshop owner must be proud of his credentials. There is one other book here you can get. I created a spark. Is it on the small table? No, it's in one of the bookshelves. Alexander is not interested in those self-help books. Really? Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace, have won for thee a non a place within this broken no, no, breast. Not bad. You can, you can and another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, this untouched by worldly care, care. Where shadow they her earthly bed. Oh, that she were not there. Yikes. And another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind air back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that ere my soul eternal makes for you. Hmm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the love poem book to the shelf. Alexander picks up the fallen page. It's the love poem he particularly liked. It must have fallen out of the poetry book. I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Giving them Thank you, Merchant. I used to always do that, too. <laughs> I gave him the longest crown, though. <laughs> That's pretty much, I think, all you can do here for now. There's a young girl in the yard. The girl is dressed in a long, plain orange robe with a thick headdress. From the appearance of her clothes and from a skittish, fearful look about her, Alexander gets the strong impression that she is a servant, or even worse, a slave. The serving girl appears to be stealing a quiet moment tending the rose bushes. Alexander is greeted with silence. You lazy thing! Get back to work and stay away from those roses! I told you a million times, those flowers are too sweet for the likes of you! You still got to do the breakfast dishes, make lunch, and clean the stables yet this morning! And get your veil back on! No one wants to look at 
at your face. Yes, stepmother. It's Cinderella. Alexander doesn't want to intrude on private property unless he's been invited. Do it. Do it. Red roses beautifully cover the top of the house's fence and gate arbor. Alexander has not been invited to pick the family's roses. He's so polite, isn't he? Yeah, it's To take the path, he's a Alexander need only walk on it. It bothers me. Like, take a rose and walk away. <laughs> How do you go somewhere else? Just walk there. Yeah. You walk there. Your pants feel good. Oh, wait. You're pulling my hair. Your pants feel good. How oh. Wait, it's not letting me go anywhere. There, there Jake, give Jake a turn. Is there not a way over there? No, there is. Jake, we'll walk there. Just watch this microphone and we'll get out. This is a microphone that's recording, so you got to be careful with this. Let's see if I can put it in a better spot. The good microphone isn't working for some reason, so I gotta use this cheap one. Uh, this was like a cheap oh, there we go. $5 microphone. Oh, hey, that's great. Ah! Oh, that's seriously wonderful. And I can show you the way to the next island. No. No. Save if you're gonna jump in. You can do it, just save before you do it. But I remember that this part was bad. Actually, you should save anyway, even if you're not gonna do it. We have How do save. I save this? Yeah, go to save. And just, yeah, we're playing in, um, in Scum, so it uses a different save system. Yeah, just click a zero, a zero. And just type in a save. Like, water or not water? Fluffhead. Fluffhead was a man. Water. Do I jump into the water or not? Doc. What's up, Doc? What happens if you jump? Oh, no, don't tell me. Can you what jump in the water for? for me? I said I'd show you how to get to the next island, didn't I? Here, Considering the poor condition of the shore, it looks like the easiest way to get into the water is just to jump off of here. Some clothes in the bathroom that don't belong there, the sweat is a t-shirt. Alexander, and under, struggle as he might, he so feels he himself being pulled out, out to sea. Who's in there? Not a very good swimmer, are you? As his head Sorry, submerges for the third not. time, Alexander Hi. finds himself pondering the wisdom of going out on a limb for a stranger. Alexander couldn't handle those currents. That Restore? boy must be an unbelievably strong swimmer. Restore? Yeah. What are you waiting for? I said I'd show you how to get to the next island, didn't I? Wait, the guy wouldn't save him? No. That's strange. The young boy in the water just disappeared. Oh well, perhaps yeah. he just dove under the water. He died. He just disappeared. Because he didn't listen to him. Oh, and you are all bone. Like, turn around. How, how do I switch? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. How do I switch without having to like go up and pick it? The yeah. right mouse yeah. button. Yeah. Wait, turn around. Alexander feels his pockets carefully to make sure he hasn't lost anything. Oh, you have to eat something. Mm -hmm. Alexander feels his pockets oh, carefully to, to make walk. sure he. Does not reply. Oh, I'm trying to click the guy. Just click. Alexander promises himself that he will not go click home until he has determined the, what Cassina's feelings bubble. are for him and if she needs his help. Go away! The ferry's out of business. Click. No, try it again, but click the edge of the bubble on him. I remember I had trouble with that too. The first time I tried it. I said the ferry's out of business. What do you want to keep bothering me for? Talk to him. Click the edge of the bubble on it. Yeah, there you go. The rope is slacking off Oops. and refuses to come in. There you go. Try it now. Go away. The ferry's out of business. You want me to do it? I, sure. I've tried it before. No way. I remember this was hard for me, too. It's like Alexander it's feels his pop. There's like not enough room. I said the ferry's out of business. The rope is... Excuse me, my name is Alexander. The owner of the bookshop in the village told me you might be able to help me. I hear you used to run this ferry for the islands. I'd like to talk to you if you have a moment. You say old Ali sent you? I can't see why. The ferry's not running, you know. I understand. I'd just like to talk to you about the islands if you don't mind. Well, I guess it'd be all right if Ali sent you. Well, don't just stand there. Come on inside. What is it you wanted to talk about, young man? The ferryman seems to be the only one in the cabin to address. I'm a visitor to these islands. I'd like to learn what I can about the area. So you said outside. What is it you want to know? Well, for one thing, why has the island's only ferry been dry docked? Huh. It just ain't safe to sail these days. What with the island's beauting and all. Wazir al Hazred ordered the ferry closed till things settled down. Me? I don't think she'll ever see water again. <sighs> but why are the islands feuding? You got me. Something about stolen property or some such thing. Tis a real shame. Things used to be so friendly. Then this unrest is recent. A few years is all, but it's been long enough. Perhaps if the ferry were repaired. This old thing? This ferry's been out of water so long she's no longer even seaworthy. Her boards have dry rot. She'd fall apart at the first taste of seawater. But there must be some way to get off this island. There's only one other way to travel that I know of. A magic map. The owner of the pawn shop can tell you more about that than I can, Alexander. Why not I eat? The chair does not respond. Tell me more about the ferry. I remember when I used to ferry Queen Alaria and Princess Cosima themselves. There was no thought of danger back then. They used to go visiting to care for the needy and to keep up the friendly relations between the islands. I remember their last trip. Things had started getting nasty by then, and when they came back aboard, I gathered that the Queen and the Princess had been received a bit coldly. Princess Cosima was such a pretty thing, and she was terribly upset. But who could be spreading these lies, she asked the Queen, but the Queen had no answer. Hmm. I guess I better go. Ask, her, uh, ask him a, more, uh, a couple more things, because he, he, he answers a few more questions. What do you do now that the ferry no longer operates? Me? I'm out of a job. The job my ancestors have held for generations. I'm the only one trained to avoid the reef and the rocks. But that knowledge does me no good now. Is there no other boat on the island? Anyone? 
One that might be more seaworthy? Boats don't last long on these shoals, as you may have found out if you got here by ship. You can be quite sure that this old ferry is, or was, the only craft on the island. Tell me more about Princess Cosima. Ah, such a beautiful child, and so pure of heart. Why, a contrary thought has never crossed her mind. Her mother was the same, the king and queen. They served the islands, not the other way around. Always think about the people. Ah, they are sorely missed. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonders is a lovely spot. A bit crazy, mind you. Gotta have a good sense of humor to enjoy a tour there. Yeah, he tells you about each island. What else can you tell me about the land? The Isle of the Beast is pretty, but unfortunately, you can't get very far onto the island. What else can you tell me about the land? The inhabitants of the Isle of the Sacred Mountain are the most gorgeous creatures you'll ever see. If you ever get to see them, that is. What else can you tell me about the Sacred Mountain? The Castle of the Crown sure is a beauty. She's the finest palace ever built, I'll warrant. Alright, let's see. There's one more island. What else can you tell me about the land? Some say that the land of the Green Isles is near the edge of the world, and that the deadly currents are a result of a magnetism that sucks life from this world to the next. Of course, that's just silly talk. He, he didn't talk about the other one. What else can you tell me about the land? Let's see. The Isle of Wonders a lot of spot. A bit crazy, mind you. There's a rabbit's foot on the table. It seems the ferryman is counting on a little luck. I see you have a rabbit's foot. Has it brought you much luck? As you can see, my luck's been out for some time now, despite that old charm. Why don't you take it with you? Perhaps giving the darn thing away will bring me good fortune at last. Perhaps it will at that. Thank you. Well, I think I'll be going now. Thanks for allowing me into your home. Posh, not at all. It breaks the boredom, if you know what I mean. <sighs> Excuse me, merchant, but the ferryman mentioned that you might have a magic map of the land of the Green Isles. Why, as a matter of fact, I do. I keep it under the counter. It's been gathering dust so long that I nearly forgot about it. It was quite a few years ago, you see. The estate of a wealthy wizard fell into my hands when he died. It was useless magical junk mostly, which reminds me, I've still got some things of his in the back that I need to dump out. Anyway, the magic map was the one true treasure in the lot. 
The wizard was quite old and feeble and had enchanted the map to aid in traveling. It is said that one need only desire to be on an island depicted on the map to find oneself there. It is a very valuable map, as you can imagine. Unfortunately, no one is interested in traveling these days. It is far too dangerous with the current state of the kingdom. What would you take for the map? I would normally want something magic in return, but since I am hardly overrun with prospective buyers, I would be willing to take anything of equal value in exchange. I'll take it out, I'll take it out, just don't take it out. Oh, the, uh, hold on. The ring or the rabbit's foot? Do the rabbit's foot. Would you be interested in making a trade for this merchant? Hmm, a rabbit's foot. I do not Ellen. believe I could okay, use that. Ellen, let me brush your hair then. Okay, look for something. The Is ring. Tell in the door. Um, Would you be willing to take my family ring in exchange for the magic map? Daventry, are you a king then? No, that's my father, King Graham. I'm just Alexander. Well, Prince Alex, she is a beautiful ring. Are you sure you can part with such a unique family heirloom? The ring does mean a lot to me. I didn't always have a family, you know. Still, hey, it hey, is hey, only gold. Wait, I just want to see if it comes there are more important things Remember at King's stake Quest now. Then you sleep. now own a magic map, oh, Prince Alex. Man. I will keep your ring out of sight for a few days. If you find anything else of great well, value in your travels, ah, and a it, warning about the map. It will only operate when you are out in the open and within sight of the sea. The limitation has something to do with the teleport spell ingredients. You might try the beach. Thank you. You are very kind. And I'll remember about the map. Hey, remember that time when you put on your headband and he was wearing me dress? Suddenly, the old man in the concealing cloak sneaks past Alexander, and with a sneaky dart of his hand, steals a mint from the candy jar. Oh, Uncle James, please don't download this. The old man stuffs the mint into his mouth and wobbles unsteadily out of the pawn shop. Wait, what do the mints do again? Master, I was a smuggling in the village as you wish, and I saw a mate. I don't know, a uh, danger? No, 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 a stranger there. He says, oh, he's Prince Blavintander of Slavatry. You fool, you've been eating those mints again. I ordered you to stop that. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, no. Now, who did this stranger say he was? Prince Salamander of Pedantry, I think. You idiot! Are you trying to tell me that Prince Alexander of Daventry is here? Confound it! That's the young man Cosima met at Mordak's castle. The timing could not be worse. Tell me. What is he doing? It sounds like the guy who plays... He was in the pawn shop uh, buying a magic... Box <gasps> in Seinfeld. Smap! I need a damn magic boy. smap? What is this magic smap? <laughs> With the smap, he can travel to other islands. Master. Magic smap. That's a You're map, you don't! Oh, drag it all! I thought I took care of the only means of travel. By my scimitar. I can't have him stirring things up. Not now! Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them...
Well, he, he traded his ring for a map. So, oh, and you want to play now? I don't want to play on a hard part. Okay, so Veronica, you want to play? Uh, this is a hard part, though. You don't? Okay, so, okay, you want to play? I want to play. Alexander remembers what the pawn shop owner said about only being able to use the map out in the open and within sight of the sea. He correctly guesses that the map will not work here. I'm going to test it out. Remember what he also said, that if, uh, if you find something of equal value to the... Um, To the map, to the ring, kill it. you can trade it, trade back for your ring. Because it's a, uh, it's his insignia ring, so it's very valuable to Alexander. I want to leave the town. Leave. Don't click outside the, the map, though. No reason to bury that. Is this the one with like those Alexander troll pulls things? out his magic map. Yeah. Where, oh yeah, because the rabbit bit. Mm -hmm. What do you remember that? The green. Uh, what did I say? Oh, I saw object. So we got to go to the Isle of Wonder, the Isle of the Sacred Mountain, or the Isle of the which Beast. which one has the trolls? Because I know I don't want to go there yet. Trolls. Don't go to the secret mountain. I don't like that. That that I feel like the secret mountain should be uh, saved for last. Because I remember when we did that, and that one felt like it, it should be saved for last. Which one has had the uh, the trolls? Because I know not to go there. I um. So, Isle of the Beast one. is Beauty and the Beast, and Isle of Wonder is. Um, the, the dwarves? The dwarves, yeah. That we don't Is that what you mean, the dwarves? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think it's Isle of Isle of the Crown is... They're easy to see. Do you want me to play, Owen? Because I, like I think the dwarves puzzle is... Can I do the dwarves? Next. It's hard. Okay. I can't do it. Can I? Okay. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think we're ready for that yet. Cause oh. I'm, but, uh, but, um... Which one should we go to first? Do you want me? Is, um, let me play for a bit. Actually, I haven't James played. James, is one allowed to jump on the bed? I, I don't want you jumping on the bed. I don't want to jump on the bed. I don't want to jump. Wait, Owen, let me touch your hair. Oh, oh, Owen is almost done. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. This is the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. Now it's Jake's turn. I want to save for a bit. 
Golly! No, don't go to <laughs> there appears to be no way past the cliffs. Though roughly hewn, the cliffs do not provide regular handholds for climbing, it and they seem otherwise impenetrable. Glenn, that's exactly what you did to me. There appears to be something etched into the face There's of the cliff. Alexander decides to get closer. There's a feather! There's a flower. Ignorance kills, wisdom elevates. Interesting, Someone right? Go to me. Does anyone know what that means? Ignorance no. kills the wisdom. What does the ignorance rock has been etched by some unknown hand. What does ignorance One may need to read that about means the logic like cliffs you're, you're in the guide to the land of the you're green well, you're, 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 you might be smart, but you, you're not learned. Get on my back. You're like lazy. See, look, we can touch. Nothing touch, happens. Touch the letters. If you read the guidebook, you can solve that puzzle. Near the base of the cliff. Yeah, but can we go to different island first and collect the feather? Alexander and the notices an unusually large coal black feather lying on the beach. Okay. Do you pick up the feather and the flower. <laughs> Alexander takes the feather. Alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideously strong, skunk-like odor. For a moment, he can smell nothing else. Oh, that's the smelling. The stink flower, yep. And the what, what what fairy, colors of flame what burst from the center of the incredibly stinky flower and drip onto its petals. The flower's appearance is as flamboyant as its smell. And then the feathers Alexander are... is carrying an unusually large oh. black feather. Yeah, I know it's that one. Alexander is carrying a copper coin of Devantry. King Graham graces the front of the coin. The small green mint looks very tasty. Alexander is carrying a book from the bargain table in the bookshop. Let's read this book real quick. Alexander opens the bargain book and reads a paragraph at random. Two dulcimers raised to the degree of forty half dulcimers, divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese, put over the result of ten fine mackles, albeit small fine mackles, stretched over the total of fifty-three and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. Never, 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 never. Phew. What an incredibly boring book. No wonder the bookshop owner wanted to get rid of it so badly. So I'm carrying a boring book. Oh, that's for the looking one. Alexander pulls out his that's magic map. The boring book is for the looking one. What looking one? Like the one with the really Alexander good feels a strange pulling sensation. Okay. Do you think we have all the items? That's why I think the Isle of the Beast. Alexander is standing at the edge He's of the like sea on a heavily beast. forested island. As far as the eyes can see, tall trees spread out their branches as though straining to link arms, their tops forming a canopy above. A path leads north through the forest. We didn't. We just played it. Hey, look, it's a boiling. A pond lies across the path. The water boils as if over some magical flame. A, a An old abandoned hunter's lamp is hanging on one of the trees. Alexander flower. wonders who old might have put in these dense woods. Let's see if we can get that. Old lamps for new college. Isle of no. the Beast. Let's try and grab it. <laughs> to get to the lamp. Alexander must first cross the pond. How? All right, let's cross it. No, all right. No, you're gonna burn. You're gonna burn. Alexander decides to brave the boiling pond. <laughs> and soon realizes a deep sympathy for soup vegetables as he learns the true meaning of being in a stew. like Alexander's in a bit of a stew. Uh -huh. I get it. Get me out. Get me. 
Alright. You guys didn't go to the castle, right? No. It's pretty weird that you guys didn't Why? skip that. Well, let's go to the Alexander Isle of Wonder first. No, it's just funny map. that you guys went, because cause, uh, that's where Kasima is, and the guy said that's where Kasima is, and you guys didn't even go there. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. We'll go to the Isle of Wonder, and then, and then we'll go back to the castle of the crown, see if we can go to the castle. Yeah. Yay! One of the oysters is sitting up in bed and doesn't look very happy. He seems to be the only one who can't sleep. Mm. In the oyster's mouth, Alexander can see a glint of white. That's me and Veronica at Pouring book! <laughs> like, how is Gwen sleeping? Why aren't you asleep like the other oysters? Oh, I'm so weary, but I can't sleep! I have a terrible ache in my mouth. That's what I said the other day! <laughs> Oh God, so a string great. of letters floats in the water. The letters spell out, where are you going? Alexander's heard of alphabet soup, but this is ridiculous. Hmm. So this is the Isle of Wonder. Let's save here. Let's call it alphabet soup now. Let's try and, try and grab that. The blue ocean stretches on for as far as Alexander can see. Alexander wades into the sea to get the strange object in the water. The ocean currents tug at Alexander's legs. Hmm. That object is just a bit out of reach. Alexander wades deeper into the sea to get the strange object in the water. The underwater toe is amazingly strong here. It pulls ferociously at Alexander's legs. No. Before Alexander can retreat, the currents grab his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. The currents around the island pull Alexander under. As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. Decades. Oh. Next. Nothing like getting swept off your feet. Wow. Alright. So what are we going to do about Wait. this? This oyster. How can we help her go to sleep? What's wrong with your mouth? No offense, but it hurts too much to talk. Why don't you let me see if I can help? No way! No one's looking in my mouth. I hate dentists. I love going So how can we help her help her sleep then? Good idea. Wait, but don't you need it? If you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps you'd like me to read to you. Hey, that would be great! Two dulcimers raised to the degree of 40 half dulcimers, divided into equal parts by the third of a cackle of grouse geese, put over the result of ten fine mackles, how by small fine mackles, stretched over the total of 53 and an eighth bottles of wild beast lard. Mm. Yields a gilded minnow of precise measurements. 2,069 centidrills by 3,023,000 Maybe I could grab it right when she yawns. Puns, not punts, as might be expected. This is not to say, however, in any sense whatsoever, that deviations in mean temperature of five or six drags or so. Mm. Alexander makes a grab for the pearl. Hey! You fixed my mouth! It feels great! I... I... Ah, oh, the little oyster drifts into peaceful slumber with the rest of his oyster friends. <laughs> Alright, 
so we did that. Now let's see what happens when we go over here. Alexander hears someone coming. Okay. I hate this November part. <laughs> I fear scars of the IOPB. Watch for a foreign man, said he. With ears and nose, tongue, hands and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If it man it be, then man it dies. Old Tom Troll, smell it or smell. Do that which you do so well. The flower. The flower, okay. Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with the jumbo nose. Tom Troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all of that, see. Man see. Man see. Man, right? A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower tis all and nothing more. Listen, how do you grow the Lord? Do your duty as you soar. With your ears, please tell us more. Now what? I don't think we have the thing to get past this one. Wait, it, which one is it? The ear? Yeah. Alexander holds the item out for the gnome with the immense ears. My ears can hear nothing so clear as the sound of a man standing here. A man, a man, so say our ears. We shall send him to his ear. Toss Alexander too far out into the sea for him to get his footing. The currents drag him under. Guess those gnomes couldn't reach a consensus. <laughs> Alright. Oh look, I can get the these. Alexander picks now. up the object floating in the water. It appears to be a string of letters. They say, Where are you going? Alexander decides to keep the odd sentence, even though it is incomplete. Go that way. Uncle okay. We just save real quick, just in case the guards come out. The guards. The gnome, the gnome guards. Or... Alexander hears someone coming. Oh, no. How do you get past the guards? We're gonna need something else. Right, I might as well just. Alexander holds the item. My nose cannot be tricked that way. The smell of man still rules the day. The man. Alright. Let's go back to the Isle of the Crown. Alexander. I want to. I want to. Uh, well. Maybe we can get Alexander our, feels our uh, ring back, because we have something of equal value. What do you think that is? The pearl? The pearl, yeah. So let's see if we can get our ring back, and then maybe we can get into the castle. What could, what could you do for sound? What's this up here? A nightingale perches on a high branch of the tree. She sings the most beautiful song Alexander has ever heard. Hello, nightingale. What a lovely tune you sing. 
the nightingale only looks at Alexander suspiciously and continues to sing. Let's just go to the castle real quick. Wait, don't you need the Probably. nightingale to, uh... Two guards take their stance in front of the castle doors. They look quite fierce and have the stiff, blank expression of soldiers on formal duty. There's a little hut just off the path. Perhaps the guard dogs have an occasional use for it, but it looks empty now. Castle of the Crown. Alexander firmly addresses the guards of the Castle of the Crown, determined to get an audience with Cassima. Good day, guard dogs. I am Prince Alexander of Daventry, and I would like... Prince Alexander of Daventry? He's the one, Wolf. See here now, we've been warned about you. Wazir al-Hazred has issued strict orders that you're not to be allowed anywhere near the castle. Me? But, but I haven't even met the Wazir. Never mind your excuses. You're on a list of undesirables and will not be getting into the castle today or any day. Now off with you. Hmm. Interesting. It's funny because if you if you if you show them the ring before you get the map, they do let you into the castle and you can speak to the vizier. Hey everybody, uh, I'm just cutting into this uh, right now. I just want to uh, show you one thing that we missed in the game, and I think why we didn't get a full score at the end of this game. Before you get the map for this ring here. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. Um, if you notice, I don't have the kids here. Uh, they already left. But I just wanted to show you here. If you go to the castle with the ring before you trade it for the map, you can go to the castle and talk to the guards here. These are the, the guard dogs. Excuse me, guardsmen, uh, uh, guard dogs. I've been traveling for months to see Princess Cosima. I would like an audience, please. I'm sorry, but the princess is not receiving visitors, particularly not strangers. If you notice, the guard dogs don't recognize you yet, because uh, the uh, the genie hasn't reported back to the vizier yet about you. I really must see the princess. Could I speak with someone in charge? Who are you that I should bother Captain Saladin? Huh? My name is Alexander. I am a prince of Daventry and a friend of the princess. A prince, is it? I see. Yeah, and I am lord of this dusty path. Step aside. You'll not be getting into this castle without some proof of your claims. So what you do is you just uh, take out your royal insignia ring, proof that you're ro um, Prince of Daventry. Alexander decides to try his royal insignia ring on the guards. With all of his papers lost in the shipwreck, it is the only possible proof of his identity that he can think of. Perhaps this ring will convince you of my identity. It is the royal insignia ring of Daventry. Ha! I'm sure! Just let me take a look at that ring. I think they messed up with the voice there. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Your Highness. It's just that princes are so uncommon in these parts. Let me get Captain Saladin. The guard returns a moment later with a majestic-looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry, I presume. I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, but I'm sure Wazir al Hazred will want to meet you, if indeed you are a friend of the princess. Please, follow me. Lord al 
Alhazred, a visitor to see you. Prince Alexander of Daventry. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cassima. Some months ago, my father, King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard named Mordak. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cassima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I'm afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. <clears throat> well, I came to make sure that Cosima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, Things have greatly changed for Cosima since her ordeal in Mordak's castle. Cosima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Cosima is sequestered in mourning for them as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be appropriate. You see, it is time for Cosima to take her responsibilities seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. As was her parents' wish, Cosima and I are to be wed. We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Cosima wants now. As a prince and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there is any further embarrassment. I see. I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Cosima... Well, I apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. May your journey home be swift. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable these days. But it is your neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin will escort you from the castle. Good day. So as you see, you meet Captain Saladin much sooner in the game, if you do that. You have had your hearing with Wizir al-Hazred. I trust you will respect his wishes and not return. I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Captain Saladin whispers something to the guard dogs at the castle gate, and they nod with understanding. Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. Now, you also get a different cutscene too when you when you trade in the map. Would you be David? No. Where? The ring. If you find ah, uh, thank you. Suddenly, the old man Master! I followed Prince Alexander as you wished. From the pawn shop owner, he just abstained. I just reprieved. He just got a magic map. You fool. You've been eating those mints again. I ordered you to stop that. Yes. Oh, master. Now, what is this about a magic map? With a map, Prince Alexander could travel anywhere as quickly as... <laughs> 
Scimitar, I can't have him stirring things up now. Get a hold of yourself and listen carefully, Shamir. Go to the other islands and tell them. So it's a much shorter cutscene, actually. Actually, the other cutscene I think is funnier because uh, there's the whole thing with the magic smap. Um, but you do get more points if you go to the castle first. So uh, when you watch the rest of the Let's Play, you'll notice we don't get the full score because we skip the part where we visit the castle first um, but anyway that's basically what what we missed um, so uh, anyway we'll continue with the rest of the video now I guess there's different ways to solve this game the wall is quite solid Alexander's hands would give way long before the wall did The vines are too flimsy to support Alexander. Alright, so I guess there's no getting into the castle now. How come you're walking so fast? I put the speed up. Alexander sorts the game through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gun wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, a cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Fake thumb? Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. Good day, Prince Alexander. How fare you, good merchant? I could use more business, if the truth be known. How is the bottle how you get past the Which melon? What? Which melon is the bottle? I found this large pearl. Might it be valuable enough to ransom back my no. family ring? Wait. I have never seen such a perfect pearl. Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. Of course you are. You would be cold-hearted if you felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. Alexander is carrying a copper coin of Devantry. King Graham graces the front of the coin. I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Devantry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You may make your choice from there. Alexander looks at the items on the counter to make his selection. I see you have noticed my mechanical nightingale. She is made of plain tin, but she sings the sweetest song you can imagine. Barely distinguishable from the real thing. The flute is only made of plain wood, but its I gave notes him are fine and with true. The, the Daventry coin. Ah, yes, the painter's brush. It was well one used one by one of the island's best painters. Yeah, I think painters. the, the nightingale's the best There's a lot bet. of creativity in that brush, and its bristles are still in good condition. Have you an interest in tinderboxes? 
This one is only slightly yeah. battered. It holds a good supply of flint, a sturdy striking pan, and even a candle in case you find yourself with not else to hold the flame. That mechanical nightingale looks insane. Yeah, that was later. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. Is that for the, um, Alexander the eats the mint. Hmm, not bad. A little stale, perhaps. Alexander takes a mint. Let me, um... This well, Alexander's like carrying a little ink bottle. It appears to be empty. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and listens to its sweet, sunny tune. about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. What can we do to uh, convince him that we're a friend? Should we show him the ring? Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist, but my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the <laughs> ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I've already spoken. Who did Daventry? That sound like? Where have I heard of Daventry? Sounds like the Mad sorry, Hatter of it. <laughs> mice. Yeah. You must be Prince Alexander. Cassila oh, told so, me about uh, you when she arrived home. Okay, How okay. came you here? That, Why, yes, by a ship, it. now rests upon the sand. You know Kasima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I, I saw her briefly when she first yes, returned yes, home. Yes, yes. She mentioned a prince to me, a Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known. <sighs> Terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition and not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are and how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court, and have been since the marriage of Cassila's parents, King Caliphon, and Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life. So in love. And Cassila's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited, how they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing. Smart as a whip. Kind, sweet, for she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the wazir or his plans for Casina. I'm still living at the castle of the crown as court clown, his clown. But it is more to Come keep on, my in the ground than out of loyalty. We could share. I wish I knew yeah, what the princess the thinks thing. these days. Oh, if only I could find Sing Sing, Cassidy's pet nightingale. Did you hear that? I might be able to send the princess a message. No! As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. Sing Sing's pet nightingale. Hurry back to the castle. 
Sing Sing is her pet nightingale. Thank you for speaking with me, Jala. Sing Sing is her pet nightingale. So that nightingale, I think, is the is is her pet. So we could use it to send her a message. How fair you, merchant? Business could be better. Too many people are losing interest in reading these days. Ah, it is a sign of the times. An antique leather-bound book is displayed on a little stand on the counter. On the elaborate cover is the title, Ye Useful Book of Magic Spells. How much for that book on the counter, merchant? It is a fine book, is it not? I obtained it from the estate of the one and only magician this kingdom has ever had. Poofed himself into an aardvark in the end, for so I heard. I never found the spells all that useful myself, but then I lead a boring life. I tell you what, if you can find another rare book, something a bit more marketable, I might be willing to exchange the spell book for it. I wonder if he'll take his boring book back for it. <laughs> might I return this? Please, I had a hard enough time getting rid of that book in the first place. <laughs> I guess not. Alright. I just want to do one more thing and then... Why? Then, Why Gwen, it's your that? turn. Who wants to play next? Is it Veronica's turn? Or do you want to try I'll next? Go. I want to do a part with the dwarves. Part. You want to do the dwarves part? Okay, then I'll let Samantha go. But I'm not going to be the... I, I want to do the peace part. You know, I forgot what you have to do. Okay. That's the boiling hot water. I just want to do one part and then I'll stop. You're like, go to the beach and that's your only part. Uh, I'm having trouble with this too. <sighs> I want to boil on top. Oh, that's the list no. I want to do the hole in the that's not till later. You guys remember a lot, huh? So, so remember what what uh, Jalo said? He said that this nightingale. Well, he said that 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 um, her pet nightingale is named Sing Sing, and we could use it to send a message. You didn't think that this is the nightingale? So, how do you think we can charm the nightingale? All right, so let's see if we can. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale one? and places it on the roof. Okay. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet, tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. All right. So now, what message should we send the nightingale? Should we, should we just give her the ring? Where are you? Yeah. Tell her that we're here. This is our Where royal. Where are you going? The ring has. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. So if we give her, if we give her the ring, she'll know we're here. But don't you need the ring? Alexander holds out his insignia ring to the nightingale, hoping she perhaps is the nightingale that Jallo spoke of, and that she might be able to take the ring to Cosima. The ring is the one thing he has that might alert Cosima to his presence on the Isles. The nightingale swoops down and grabs the ring. She flies off towards the castle, perhaps to Cosima. Sing, sing. What have you got in your mouth, my pretty? A gold ring? Sing, sing. Where did you get this? Realm of Daventry. But this is Alexander's ring. Oh, my soul. He must be here. Sing, sing. I wish you could tell me what you've seen. Is he really here, then, on this very island? Oh, if only I could leave this castle as easily as you. Jump out the window. Take this ribbon, Sing Sing. 
If you know where he is, return it to him. Please be careful, Alexander. It is so dangerous, and yet I could not wish you away. The little bird makes a delivery. The nightingale has dropped a bit of red velvet on the ground. It's a red velvet hair ribbon. Could it be? Could it possibly belong to Cosima herself? Or am I merely wishing it were so? Oh. The lady's hair ribbon is made of the finest red velvet. A long strand of black hair is caught in the ribbon. Hmm. Alexander examines the red ribbon and finds a strand of long black hair. Is there anything else we could send her? We have this this. Uh... Alexander has a love poem from a book in the bookshop. Yeah. Send her the love poem. Okay. Alexander holds out the love poem, hoping that the bird will deliver it to the same place she oh took the ring, in the chance that the receiver might Please. truly be Cosima. The nightingale swoops down, grabs the love poem, and takes it towards the castle. Sing, sing, my sweet. You bring another present. Let me see. It is a poem, Sing Sing. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? Oh, Alexander. I was hoping he'd return to you. Take this to him while he waits. Hurry, my fleet one. The little bird makes a delivery. It's a note. Dearest Alexander, I cannot believe you are here, my friend. Please, please be careful. Abdul isn't about to let anyone interfere with his plans. Watch out for Abdul's genie, Alexander, and do not do anything rash. I am not without resources, and I will prevail if I can only find some small means of defense. Do nothing to try to get to me. You must not be endangered again for my sake. Greatly in your family's debt, Kasima. Alexander's hand trembles as he reads the note. For the first time in his long search, he has heard her voice again, if only in writing. No words of love, only friendly concern. Friend. Is the maiden merely shy, or does she regard him only as a brother? All right. I'm going to save here. And, Samantha, yeah. I think we have everything we need to get past the dwarves. So why don't you... Alexander remembers what the pawn shop owners said about only being able to use oh, yeah. the map out in the open and within sight of the sea. He correctly guesses that the map will not work here. Which way is the ocean? This way? Yeah, exactly. What's up? What's the matter, guys? Alexander pulls out his magic map. 
That'd be awesome if you had a well, why don't you sit on that side of my house? It's an aisle of the one. Wait. And then it, it, it's, take turns. it's in aisles of the one. Aisle okay. of wonder. Right. Alexander yeah, feels right. a strange pulling sensation. Sit on that side for now. You got a cookie? Chips Ahoy? To take the path, Alexander need only walk down it. Alexander hears someone coming. I might like die the first time. Five discards of the eye will be. Watch for a foreign man, said he, with ears and nose, tongue, hands, and eyes. Five discards of the eye will be. Watch for a foreign man, The one that smells has to smell the flower. Oh no, this is the one that. The one that smells, yeah. This is the one that smells? Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with the jumbo nose. Remember, you need to get it yourself. How troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A Why flower of stench nice has washed ashore. A flower, tis all. They always cover up their, more. Whatever their sense is. Yeah. Alexander winds the tin nightingale and plays it for the gnome with the monumental ears. is not a way to spy. My ears cannot be told a lie. A nightingale is all there be. No man is near, and so say me. Is this eyes on his ear? Taste through and through, and we might know whether the wind Alexander holds the mint out for the gnome with the gigantic mouth. <laughs> Grunflump knows a tasty treat. It matters not what others bleat. No danger is this one so sweet. Tree, Billy, use your hands. Is it beast or is it man? Alexander holds the rabbit foot out for the gnome with the huge hands. Be all you mad? What aileth thee? A bunny can't trill merrily. A hare is not at all tastes sweet. A rabbit here is all we greet. You don't remember the eye? No, I do, but I'm scared. Okay. Alexander's carrying a little ink bottle. It appears to be empty. You need a cloak. Alexander pours the contents of the empty looking ink bottle over himself. Can I go back? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, actually, oh, who is next? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. right. 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 Four right. morons do I you speak with nightly. There's nothing Four there morons. at all, I say. Enough of this. Let's now away. Watch when you spin the chair. Alexander did it. He's fooled the guards. Well, now you can explore the island, so go wherever you want. Wait, they don't come back? Now they don't come back. Yeah, save, actually. Mm -hmm. Save, Just save. Just they come yeah. back? Save, save. Where do I save? Go to the... Yeah, this? that one. Yeah. Go save. Save as... And go to save as a new one. Yes. Yeah, six. six. Just type in fooled guards or something. You can you can make up something different. Oh, that's foul. That's all right. Doesn't matter. Okay. Mm. Because just keep it. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you type. You just click save. I just gonna play foul. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that word so much. I actually really like that word. Foul. And now, yeah, just don't click outside. Try to keep the mouse inside mm -hmm. the game. Yeah. Can someone else do it? Yeah, I will. I will. and an audible reply. My dear tree, is it true that your bark is worse than your bite? <coughs> Alexander sees no point in trying to talk to that stick in the swamp. <laughs> Did you respond to <laughs> I want to talk to the stick in the the log itself has nothing to say. The bump. The bump on the log. That bump on the log does not look particularly conversational to Alexander. Is that your butt? You could talk to the I think oh, it's my look your knee. Look at the look at the cattails. A mushy swamp lies just off the path. It doesn't look like very good swimming. A cluster of cattails flourishes near the muck of the swamp. I think you can pet them. Yuck. Alexander doesn't want to put his bare hands in that oozy swamp. The mucky swamp is no place for extensive hands-on exploration. The mucky swamp is no place for extensive hands-on exploration. Look on the, the ones on the side, yeah. Alexander decides to pet the soft-looking cattails. <coughs> Zounds, what a racket. So much for stirring up those cattails. The bump on the log does not look particularly interesting. But why can't the bump on the log stop? You can look at the, the milk weed, the, the milk plants. They don't talk till later. But can I do it when they talk to Milkweed you? thrives near the mucky swamp. Small bottles filled with milk grow on it like fruit. Oh, I know what to do. Okay. Take some of those milkweed. The Isle of the Isle of Wonders. Alexander takes a bottle of milk from the milkweed bush. Apparently, the dogwood tree doesn't like Alexander standing that close. Yeah, you. They don't. You don't talk to the bump on the log. Hi, Jake and Timmy. We're gonna get ready to go now, okay? <laughs> We're playing a game. 
All right, I guess we'll stop. Uh, we can save and quit. When we get back, yeah, we'll be back. Yeah. What time do you think you'll get back? I'm um, probably around maybe we'll like three. All right, let's stop here then, Gwen. And we'll continue it later.